Wow, kingdom greetings to everybody that has joined us this day. We know that there were other things that you could be doing this morning. We don't take it lightly that you are here, you have tuned in, and we'll try by all means to do justice to the cause. As we always say, this is the day the Lord has made for me and for you to rejoice in his presence. And we are trusting God for greater time in his presence today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. I invoke the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now to open up the eyes of our understanding. I pray for revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and the spirit of discernment. Let your way, my Father, be acceptable and receivable. Right in the midst of the valley that we might be going through, let your weight somehow make sense in our lives. Thank you. We give you the honor and the glory in the only name that makes sense, the name of Jesus. Oh, let me hear you say, Amen. I am excited. My name is Tabom Hotlani. I'm the pastor of Royalty Baptist Church, and we're going to buffet together in the presence of the Lord. The scripture says, one day the grass will wither, and the flowers will fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Can you hold your Bible in your hand? Let's make a confession before we get into this word. Just say this Bible is God speaking to me. I believe and I receive the word of God as the truth and nothing but the truth for my life right now in Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. Allow me to speak to you this morning on the subject, the title, The God is Able. Mudimo wakona. Kima kona tzotli. He still seated on the throne even today. Mudimo wakona. He knows about the valley. Ole moyone. He is able to take you out of the valley. He knows about the depths that are there in your name. He is able to remove all those depths in your life. He knows about the sicknesses in your body. He's able to bring total healing upon your body. Mudimo wakona. He's able to restore you for everything that you have lost lost in the fire because he's still God. He's still seated on the throne. He still have the power, the might, the, the adoration, everything it's in the hands of the Lord. I'm trying to show you, don't ever think the devil has power. All the power is in the hands of the Lord. I'm reading Genesis chapter number 16, verse number one. God is able. The Bible says in verse number one, but Sarai and Abram, they had no children. So Sarai took her maid, an Egyptian girl named Hagar, and gave her to Abram to be his second wife. Since the Lord has given me no children, Sarai said, you may sleep with my seventh girl, and her children shall be mine. And Abraham agreed. So she, he slept with Hagar, and she conceived. And when she realized that she was pregnant, she became very proud and arrogant towards a mistress, Sarai. Then Sarai said to Abram, it is your fault. <laughs> For now this seventh girl of mine despises me, though I myself gave her the privilege of being your wife, may the Lord judge you for doing this for me. Oh, Banna Sarai, you are the one who gave this uh, seventh girl to sleep with your husband. Now you blame your, your, your husband. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, when you study the, the Bible, there are some names that we use to identify with, with God based on what God has done for us in our lives. These are not the names of God, but are the names that people used in the Bible in order to identify with God based on what God has done in their lives. You remember after David got a victory, uh, he, he called God a Baal Perazim, God of the breakthrough. We use names like El Shaddai, which means the almighty God. It's found in Genesis 17 when God comes to Abraham to reassure his promise of giving him a child. He says, Abraham, I am God almighty. Almighty is made up of two words, all and might. 
that means after all there's nothing left so the devil doesn't possess any power god has got all the might in him we also call him jehovah jireh or jehovah jireh which which means the lord will provide we find this in genesis 22 when god told abraham to sacrifice his son uh, isaac uh, and then when abraham was about to sacrifice this young boy an angel screamed abraham wait 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 and when he looked up he saw a ram somewhere uh, trapped inside a tree and he went there and sacrificed that ram uh, and he called that place uh, jehovah uh, jireh which means the lord provider david also calls him in psalm 23 uh, jehovah ra which means the lord is my shepherd this boy has been rejected it's somewhere in the wilderness and he knew that there's no hope that he has but the lord remained his shepherd i like what he says he doesn't say the lord is a shepherd but he says the lord is my shepherd it's a personal relationship and we also call him jehovah rafa which means the lord that heals we see this in exodus 15 when god reaffirms his promises on the children of israel that i will never take the the sickness that i've put on the egyptians and put it on you because i'm the lord that healeth thee the lord your healer jehovah rafa the lord who hills he says in jeremiah 1 12 that i watch over my word in order to perform my word once i spoke a word upon your life i will perform that word in your life paul also makes a reference to the life of abraham when he wrote a letter to the romans church in romans chapter 4 uh, verse 21 he says fully abraham was fully satisfied and assured that god was able and mighty to keep his word and to do exactly exactly what God has promised Abraham even though physical evidence was against his faith but Abraham was fully convinced that God was able and capable to do exactly what God has said now where we have just started, where we have just read in Genesis chapter 16 when you get the background of it from Genesis chapter number 12 you see God coming to call Abraham is the first calling of Abraham what God tells Abraham Abraham I want you to leave your household and your father's house take your wife and your property go to the land that I will show you underline the word that the land that I will show you God didn't give him any map or any GPRS that means God I mean Abraham has to be fully dependent on God for the direction and God tells him if you agree with me I will bless you I will make your name famous and distinguished in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed i'll make you a dispensary of the blessings i will uh, bless anybody who blesses you and i will curse anybody who curses you and abraham took his wife took his property but he made one mistake he took lord his nephew with him god only told him take your wife and your property go but he took lord with him and we know along the way lord cost abraham a lot of problems once you take people that god didn't tell you to take they will cause a lot of problems in your life and when abraham arrived at that place he found that there was famine in the land and he went to greener pasture which is egypt egypt by the way egypt is not the promise of god abraham took his own decision he left that place and went to egypt why did god lead him to a land when he knows there's famine in the land is because he blessed him remember proverbs 10 it says the blessing of the lord will bring wealth to you without toiling from your side the blessing is able to turn a dry dissoluted land into the garden of eden so the blessing of the lord was supposed to remove the famine in the land but abraham he took a shortcut and went to egypt egypt is not the promised land and i can tell you once you go to the places that god didn't ordain for you to get there you will end up compromising when you get there guess what when they arrived at that place abraham tells sarai sarai you are a beautiful woman by the way sarai is almost 65 years old sarai you are a beautiful woman the men of egypt are gonna kill me and take you away from me when we arrive there tell them you are not my wife but you are my sister a compromise make them to tell a lie because they went to the wrong place and they lied when they get there and you know that way most of us in the relationships where we are the foundational phase was based on a lie 
I mean, you meet this woman, you are driving a Mercedes Benz, you know that that's, that car is not yours, it's your cousin's, but you tell them it's your car. And lies have got a way of coming out. Whether you hide them, they will always come out. Lie. Once you are in the wrong place. You remember the Bible says in the Genesis that the two that God has brought together, no man should separate. I remember uh, Proverbs 19 verse 14, it says, a wife who has understanding. She comes straight. If you are a woman, you can put a husband who has understanding. They come straight from the Lord. So that means if God has brought me together with this woman or this man, if you are a woman, you don't have to lie. God has already put the ability of understanding on the inside of them. But once you attach yourself to what God did not ordain, it will cause you to tell a lie and compromise. That's why Abraham and, and his wife, Eve, they find themselves in a position where God did not tell them to go there and they ended up compromising and lying. Because many people, we, we, we are not willing to wait on the Lord. I like what the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord, not for the Lord. The reason why we get tired is because we are waiting for the Lord. God has already done anything that is supposed to be done concerning your life. So when you wait, you don't wait for God. You wait on God. And it says their strength shall be renewed. Let me give an illustration. Let's say uh, you are a waitress or a waiter. You work at the restaurant. Your duty is not to wait for the customers. But your primary duty is to wait on the customers. What do I mean by waiting on? When you arrive at your workplace, you make sure that the floor is clean. You make sure that the table are set. You make sure that the utensils are clean. You make sure that the chef is on time. You make sure that the menu corresponds with the food that have been prepared in the kitchen. In doing that, you are waiting on the Lord. You are busy preparing for what is coming on you. You are not waiting for God, but you are waiting on the Lord. And the Bible says your strength shall be renewed strength and strong are two different ways strong has got to do with the physique the outside appearance but the strength is an inner thing your faith your belief your hope in god shall always be renewed because you are waiting on god most people are waiting for master and miss right but this is time to make you right when you wait on God, it's time to prepare to make you right for that person when they come into your life. That's why most people, they can't wait on the Lord. They are busy doing it for themselves. They are trying to assist God. God does not need your help. All that he requires of you, it's your participation. So don't try to assist God. He's got it. He's got it. He doesn't need your help. All that he needs is your participation. They tried to help God. And they went to the place that they were not supposed to be. But God kept his promise. He kept his promise. Now in Genesis 15, God comes to God in verse number 4. He says to Abraham, he says, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, him, Abraham, and saying, This man shall not be your heir. This man referring to Elzia. Elzia is one of the trusted seven in the household of Abraham. Now, God, uh, Abraham was telling God, God, uh, I don't have a child. Uh, did you appoint this male servant in my house to be the inheritor of my wealth? And God tells him, no, no, this servant will not be your, your heir. But he who shall come from your own body shall be your hair. I like it in the King James. It put it nice. It says in the King James, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine hair. Bowels is the inner part. So that means, I, I like God doesn't say bowel, but he says bowels. So that means it includes Abraham and Sarai. The child will come out of your own bowels. 
girls and the bowel of your wives awry. The issue here was not about the child. The issue was about the child made out of Abraham and Sarai. So that means for Abraham and Sarai to reach their destination, they have to work together because if the issue was about the child, then God could have accepted the child of that seventh girl, Hagar, by the name of Ishmael. So the issue was not about the child. The issue was about these two working together towards getting a child. The issue is not about the destiny. The issue is about you and your partner working together towards the destiny. That's number five. And he brought him outside and said, look now towards the heavens and count the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And the Bible says, Abraham believed in the Lord and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now, chapter 16, Sarai comes, the wife of Abraham, and put up a suggestion. He tells Abraham, Abraham, we've been waiting for, I'm just paraphrasing, we've been waiting for God to bring us a child. Let us make our own child. Take this servant of mine, Haggai, and make a child with her. And I will take that child and make him mine. They are trying to assist God. Or God, we've been waiting for you for too long. It's like you have been delayed. Let's, let's help you. Let's make our own child. Not realizing that making a child on your own, it causes a problem. Now the Bible says, when Hagar became pregnant, she looked down on Sarai. Don't forget, Sarai ke mastene. Ki ene the owner of this household. She's the wife to Abraham. But when Hagar became pregnant, she despised Sarai. She looked down on Sarai. Remember, the Bible says when you become intimate with somebody, you become one with them. But Paul says something in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 that I want to bring you your attention to. He says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? For what communion has with light uh, has light with darkness? Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So that means when Abraham became intimate with Hagar, they became one, but they became unequal because Hagar is not the ordained wife of Abraham. The ordained wife of Abraham is Sarai. Hagar is a maid servant to, Sar to Sarai, but now they have became one. But the problem, they are not equal the other one is here the other one is here now they become unequally yoked now let's give an example in the olden days they will take two strong bulls and yoke them together they put a yoke on this one and they put a yoke on this one and then on the field they are lame because they didn't have tractors in those days now usually they take the two strong bulls and yoke them together so that they can work together. Let's say for argument's sake, they yoke the strong bull and the weaker bull. When they work together on the field, the weaker bull will start to worry the stronger bull and they won't finish the course of working in the field. Once you attach yourself to somebody that God did not ordain for your life. These people, they will start to worry you along the way. Before you met them, you were glowing, you were happy, you were bubbly, you were this person that we loved the company of. But since you got together with somebody that God did not ordain in your life, these people, they start to worry you. Right now, you are depressed, you are angry, you are negative, you don't like talking about relationships and marriage. Is because you attached yourself with somebody that God did not ordain in your life. And I can tell you about Lola Pisa. They will drain you. They are like parasites. They will drink your blood until nothing is left in you because you are not complementing each other. The other one is weaker. The other one is strong. And you will get weary along the way. Don't get attached to the wrong people. Now, her guy thinks she's a wife. 
she's looking down on Sarai. But you might be one with Abraham, but they are not equal. It's an unequal yoke, and it causes the problem. And it doesn't end there. It causes generational problems. Let me show you in, in Genesis 21, verse number 8. The Bible says, time went by and the child grew. This is after Isaac was born. Uh, the child grew and was wind. The child, we're referring to Isaac. And Abraham gave a party to celebrate the happy occasion. I Meaning they are celebrating uh, the birth of the child Isaac. Verse 9. And by the way, at this time, uh, Ishmael is already born. He's also a child of Abraham. Verse 9. But when Sarai noticed Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and the Egyptian girl Hagar, teasing Isaac. Meaning... They were just making an ordinary joke with Isaac. Verse number 10. She turned upon Abraham and demanded, Get rid of that slave girl and her son. He's not going to share your property, meaning your wealth with my son. I won't have it. Never I bet him a little again. I won't allow this thing to happen for that slave girl and her son to partake in the wealth with my son. This upset Abraham very much. For after all, Ishmael too was his son. That day when they made a child with Hagar, they never realized that they were causing a generational problem. Today we can speak about generational curses, but I can tell you God is not the one who curses you. This problem, it originates from the problems that you started back there when you attached to yourself you made yourself one with the people that God did not ordain to be with your life. Hardly did you know that this problem is going to affect your children and your children's children for generations to come. And I can tell you today, the problem here, Isaac and, and, and Ishmael, it did not end in the time of Abraham. Even today, 2020, there is still a problem. Yeah, Ishmael and Isaac. Even in today's scenario, but it, it affected generations and generations to come because they decided to attach themselves to the people that God did not ordain. But God is faithful to his promise. In Genesis 18, we see a scenario whereby Abraham is sitting under the tree. Uh, he saw three men passing by. These men were angels going to destroy the city of Gomorrah and uh, Sodoma. And the spirit of discernment told Abraham, Abraham, these are not ordinary men. These are angels. And Abraham invited them into his house. And he prepared a lunch for them and they had a meal. After they ate, they asked Abraham, where is your wife Sarai? After they ate. These men were not coming to Abraham's house. They were going to destroy the city of Sodoma and Gomorrah. But Abraham invited them into a house. He prepares a lunch for them. I'm going to preach that sermon one day. There's power in the sharing of meals. In fact, it's a sermon for another day. Now, Sarai, your wife, will have a child next year, this time. They are talking to Abraham. And Sarai overheard them and she laughed. I want to draw attention to what the angel says in Genesis 18 verse 14. He says, Abraham is anything too hard for the Lord. At the appointed time when the season for her delivery comes around, I will return to you and Sarah shall have born a son. Is there anything too hard from the Lord? My attention is drawn to the book of Matthew chapter 15. The Bible says people were brought to Jesus. In these people, there were people who had different kinds of diseases. Some of them were blind. Some of them were mute. Some of them could not hear. But in that crowd, there were people that the Bible says they were maimed. A maimed person is the person who used to have a hand, but his hand was cut off. They used to have a leg, but their leg was cut off. They used to have eyes, but somewhere their eyes were removed. Those people are maimed. I can understand when the blind person can see. I can understand when the mute can, sp can speak. I can understand when those who could not hear, they can hear. But a maimed person and the Bible says Jesus, he healed
healed them all from those sicknesses. That means the maimed person who did not have a hand when Jesus prayed for them, their hand started to grow and their hand come into our life again. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I'm reminded in the book of Mark 11, the Bible says Jesus once spoke to a tree. According to my information, a tree doesn't have ears. But this tree responded to what Jesus says. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The Bible reminds me on John 11. There was this man who was dead in the tomb, buried for four days. But when Jesus arrived in the scene, the man whose body has started to decompose came back to life. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? In Mark chapter 4, the disciples are fighting against the storm. Jesus is asleep in the boat at the back of the boat. They arose, him, Master, don't you care that we are about to die? And Jesus arose. And the Bible says when Jesus arose, a kalimela sefifo, a bulela lele wate, according to my understanding, sefifo ke moya, hasena macho, hasena ritzebe, hasena ngulomo, le when Jesus spoke to them, they responded to his voice. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The same Jesus was buried in the tomb, but on the third day, the tomb could not accommodate him anymore. He arose. He's now seated at the right hand side of the Father. Is there anything too hard? for the Lord. God doesn't need you uh, to, uh, to assist him in order to bring it to pass. All that he requires of you, it's your participation. My it means kanya or glory. Mopedio Mungor High Sale in the Iliene Mudimo O Sabaling Lidilimo Kamewaha Limewaha The same God of Tuhile Sitabelo Sarona But Swana Barki Mudimu Obuikanyo Merinzi Rikanye Mohuyene O Hwahile Borraru Namunahen Talinyora Mopedio Mungur Haupa Lelui Kisilo Rikanya Mohuye ne Mudilung Tsotsoche Timudimu wa Israel. Mighty warrior, the greatest in all battles. Jehovah is your name. Libito Lahai Ke Jehovah. Hapa Lelui Kisilo. Hapa Lelui Ke Maluizi. Hapa Lelui any trouble that you might be facing. How it's related moyene, he will bring it to pass. I'm encouraging you. Stop waiting for the Lord. Start waiting on the Lord. Prepare yourself because it's about to rain. I can hear a sound of a mighty rain coming over your life. Jesus is not the one who forgot about your situation. He knows the times and the seasons. That's why the book of Habakkuk, he won't be late even for for a second he will surely bring it to pass in your life in fact some of you the great taller why did you weep when they left you wasted your tears if you knew what god has in, had in store for you give us Allah he will give you double for all your trouble he's gonna give you beauty for all the ashes you went through father i speak like the right of psalm 126 today that when the lord brought back the captives of zion we were like those who dreamed our mouth were filled with laughter it was like a dream in our lives i decree and i declare 
to everybody who's under the authority of my voice right now. Today is the last day that you spend in that valley. You are coming out in Jesus' name. May the Lord keep you and bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you his favor. May the Lord lift up his countenances on you and give you his shalom, the peace of God. I thank you, Lord. I consider it done in Jesus' name. My God. He's able to do it in your life in Jesus' name. If you are there, you have never received the Lord as your personal Savior. I want to pray with you. I want you to enjoy the joy that we have in in the Lord. And there was a song that was saying in very softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's calling for you and he's calling for me. Patiently, Jesus is waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. Yes, you who are weary and heavy laden, come home. Yes, I'm speaking to you. Nonto tena ke reke pili ba ukwati si to ngadile ulate si to ulo raumisa. You've been away from home for too long. Come home. This is your season. This is your time. Come home. Repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now, just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived before you. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me with the blood of Jesus and make me a brand new person. I believe and I receive. I am a child of God in Jesus' name. Wow, I'm so excited. Welcome to the family of God. Your name right now as I speak has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life and your life shall never ever be the same again. Find a church that preaches faith based on the word of God, which is the B-I-B-L-B-L-E and you will grow in the spirit. If you are in the vicinity of our town in Tabazimbi, you don't have a spiritual home, we invite you to come and join us. Take us, connect with us, social media, email, anything that you can use, do something to connect with us. We'll display the information of our church after this and I encourage you to keep walking by faith and may God bless you. Amen and amen and amen.